So what's the alternative? If, if there's something wrong, then what's the alternative? And I think the interesting question here, going back, would be like, how do we look at, look at state? Um, there are people who actually think that there's nothing wrong to have a powerful state. Because having a government sometimes is perhaps more important than not having a government. And you can find that justifications in Thomas Hobbes. Who thinks that uh, if you go back to uh, a state of anarchy, uh, what he calls a state of nature, uh, then human, human life can be short and so on, and brutal and nasty and poor and solitary, because that uh, it would be a war of all against all. So it's a question that, because we cannot contain, if you like, Thomas Hope is actually not very religious, but if you, if you follow that, the general framework, I think uh, that you hand over the power to the that. government. Uh, as long as it's not arbitrary, it's probably better than, say, you let everyone decide. Of course, that's a more conservative or authoritarian view of looking at things, and underlying that is, is, a, is a view that human beings are probably not equal in many ways that yeah, you can't actually trust about everyone. Like structural. You need to make sure that the, there, is, there is a procedural form of, uh, uh, of assurance that there will be competitions, there will be contestations. And, uh, and do not think that when we take look at that, that means that necessary, it would mean a, a, a game of the elites. Because uh, along that line, you can actually find next to contestation is inclusion. How do you actually get everyone involved in the game? But the whole idea here is that you do not presuppose you know what is good. We, we do not know what is eventually good. So it would be, the outcome would be one step after a contestation of all kinds of social forces. So what you want to ensure is that every social force would have its opportunity to articulate its, its case, uh, to convince the other to force its way through whatsoever. And the outcome is just something and say, we do not know. And as long as, as long as the rule of the game is followed, then it's, you can't say it's bad or good, because at the end of the day, it's, that's what people choice. If you like, it goes back to say that's an uh, a, 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 a aggregate choice. Um, now, the other option to look at that is to say, no, procedural democracy would not really ensure in substance. So therefore, we need it to be much more substantive. Now, looking at that, uh, then different people may have different view. Uh, but uh, 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 easy, uh, another way of looking at these two things would actually to think and say, procedural democracy uh, is basically what our representative democracy is about. And if you want substantive democracy, then perhaps a direct form would be more um, appropriate or more useful. Then we come back to the question and say, why do we actually need to have representative democracy? Why can't we just have direct democracy? Um, there's two reasons. One is that uh, you, need to be, you need to be substantially small, sufficiently small for direct democracy to work. Because you need to have, let's say, I mean, of course, technology is changing that uh, rapidly. Uh, it's technically for, it's possible for, say, you know, 10,000 people get hold on to the same network and make some decision. But in the past, that's actually not possible. So you would need to come to that. But there's also two arguments against direct democracy. One is if you're going to have a direct democracy, that means everyone needs to be involved. In a way, you can't actually stay out of public affairs. Uh, you, you can't be say, I just want to be left alone. Now, I, I personally think that it's, it's quite bad to, uh, to, to stay out of politics out of fear. But I would not. I would not completely dismiss and say if someone wants to stay out of politics, not because of fear. Fear to me is, is, a, is, is, a, is, a, is an encroachment, uh, uh, um, it's a violation to what, what civilization should be. So I have problem with that, but I don't, think that, uh, I don't think that I have every right to say everyone should be involved in politics, even though I love it. Okay. Uh, then there's, there's another argument against direct democracy, which is perhaps more direct, directly related to say why you need representative, is that a lot of decisions are very complicated. What it means is that you can't actually say, okay, I have 10 aspects of issues, uh, 10 issues at hand, and you let every, let's say every issue, you actually have two options. 
and you let everyone choose and say whatever options will just come together. Because you combine them, it will be uh, 2 to the power of 10. Now, uh, 2 to the power of 6 is already, uh, it's already 64. 2 to the power of 7 is 1 to 8. If you go further, of course, it's larger and larger. The, the question here is that, in reality, you do not actually have so many combinations. A lot of the combinations are actually tied down to each other, meaning that a lot of the issues that we look at, they somehow are correlated, uh, are related. So therefore, if you let it for free, uh, you, you say, okay, let's go for direct democracy and you pick on different things, you may end up different policy preference that cannot come together. So you end up having everyone saying that I want my, I want my, my outcome, but it may not be something that actually makes sense. Now that, that, that is not something to say that not everyone can join. It's because no matter how far you go, it probably comes to a point that, that no one will be able to understand everything. It's just a question of how things are structured. Um, to, to give a very simple explanation, if you ask people and say, whether would you like to have uh, more welfare support, most people would say yes, rather than no. Uh, but you ask them and say, would you want to be taxed higher or less? Most people would say less. And this do don't fit together. So it comes to a point that there's some of the things that perhaps, it, uh, when it becomes more complicated, then it requires people to say, do you, should you actually let deals to be made? The, the problem with direct democracy is actually it's much more rigid. Because if it were not to be rigid, then the decision would be plenty. It just simply, it perhaps take on, you know, beyond the capacity of any computer that we can invent. Now, if it's, if it's going to be rigid, then the question is that you probably get stuck with certain outcome that may not be good for everyone. So, so there are arguments against this. But having said it, it doesn't mean that you cannot, um, you know, whatever exists is actually reasonable. Because there's still many ways of looking at things. Uh, questions like, for example, can you actually have more decentralization? Because that basically brings down the size of the community. Then a lot of decisions can be made at a local level. We should be closer because the, the decision can still be made in a more direct way. Uh, you, know, you, you can enjoy the benefit of direct democracy without paying the cost for it. But you impose on something on, on a big scale, uh, you know, a, a big nation state, that would probably be problematic. So there's a lot of issues that you still can look into. And I, I think the interesting part about 2011 is that um, in, in, in countries like the Arab world, people are fighting against, uh, fighting against authoritarian regime uh, with uh, perhaps multi-party liberal democracy in mind or perhaps some other forms of polity. Uh, on the other hand, in, in, in the West, it's a question of like, but there's something, something, there's something wrong with the system, and so what next? Now, the thing of it uh, is it's actually the questions of disconnect here. And you should not see that, that it happened on the left. Just a year ago, uh, the American right was basically held ransom by the Tea Party. What the Tea Party is about is the whole question and say, we ordinary people feel that you know, we are betrayed by the elites. Now, you may question, how do they actually look at things and their analysis and so on? But that kind of sentiment was actually quite similar. And in fact, that uh, many people in the occupying movement is actually looking back and say, no, we are not going to be like the Tea Party. You know, you try to uh, you try to control the Republican, but the Republican may turn may may, may turn around and control you. So there's a lot of questions here. I think uh, what what is interesting and what I want to learn from uh, Fami and friends would be like uh, what what can we have from that movement, you know, I, this, this may be a bit, um, a bit demanding in a sense and say, uh, instead of saying that, well, there's something wrong. So the question now is that how can it be right? So thank you.